The brand Case, yes, the well-known photographic filter brand, has sent us this lens, the Case 85mm f1.4, a lens considered the queen of portrait photography on full-frame sensors, but we're not going to use it to photograph anyone. With that f1.4 aperture, we're going to point it at the stars. My name is Luis Miguel Azorín, and I welcome you once again to Natural Portraits. If you think that an f2.8 aperture is bright for night photography and astrophotography, it's because you haven't yet tried an f1.4 aperture. We're talking about four times more light gathering. And if, in addition, we combine this aperture with a focal length of 85 millimeters, we have one of the best lenses you can find for powerful astrophotography of the Milky Way's core and wide deep sky field, captured directly with a camera and a simple star tracker mount. I'd like to take this opportunity to remind you that if you also want to start photographing the universe the same way I do from the very basics, with just a camera and a simple star tracker mount, you have the Natural Portraits Academy courses available to you. From setups as simple as this one to the most advanced equipment you can imagine. In the description of this video, you'll find a link so you can check out these courses. Here are just a few examples of what we can achieve with focal length between 50 and 100 millimeters and a simple star tracker mount. And that's why I decided to test just how well the new lens released by Case performs in astrophotography and 85mm f1.4 that comes as a much more affordable alternative compared to other models on the market, such as the Sigma 85mm f1.4 DGDNR or the well-known Sony 85mm f1.4 G Master. In the case of the Case, we're talking about a lens that cost around 700 euros, compared to over a thousand euros for the Sigma or more than 2,000 euros for the Sony. That's an overwhelming difference for a lens that, as I'm about to tell you, even comes with some interesting extras at least in its Sony version. Let me tell you a bit more about this lens. 85mm of focal length, maximum aperture of f1.4, which can be stopped down to f16. A diaphragm ring in true Sigma art style, which can be set to A mode to control it from the camera, or you can operate it manually. Additionally, there's a button that lets you deactivate the click for videography use. There's also a button to enable or disable autofocus directly on the lens. And finally, two customizable buttons. As you can see, this is a lens that draws a lot of inspiration from its counterparts from other brands. In this case, it weighs 580 grams or 610 grams with the lens hood attached. However, this lens comes standard with some features you won't find on other brands, such as the magnetic filter set. As you know, Case is a brand well known for its high quality photographic filter. On this channel, we've already tested the KCKW Revolution magnetic filters. Well, with this lens, you can use these types of magnetic filters without needing any additional accessories, because the filter thread is magnetized. In fact, the lens comes standard with a magnetic UV protection filter and its corresponding cap. But in addition, in its Sony E version, we get a second filter in our pack, an ND2 to place between the lens and the sensor of our camera. This filter is clearly aimed at videography since it allows us, without needing any other filter, to cut ambient light in half, achieving a much more suitable frame rate for video recording. The truth is, this is a very complete lens that comes standard with these extras, which is something to really appreciate. Now we just need to see if this lens is truly on par optically with those it aims to compete against. And, as I mentioned, we're going to test it by practicing one of the types of photography that is most demanding when it comes to a lens's optical quality. Let's head out to the countryside to photograph the stars with this, case 85mm f1.4. Alright, we're out here in the expansive field, with all of our essential gear meticulously set up and ready for action. We have everything prepared and in its proper place, ensuring we are fully equipped for the tasks ahead. As you can see, this time I've chosen to use the Benro Polaris mount, the Benro Polaris Star Tracker, with the Sony Alpha 6400, a camera with an APS-C sensor, and the case 85mm f1.4. 
I've got everything ready to start this astrophotography session, so the first thing I'm going to do is align the equipment with a reference star. We're going to carefully point it toward a specific region of the sky that I want to meticulously photograph and let's see precisely how this lens performs. Where the magnificent Rho Ophiuchi Nebula complex is beautifully located on of the most breathtakingly beautiful and vibrantly colorful nebula complexes in the summer night sky of the Northern Hemisphere. This is the region of sky I'm going to photograph in astrophotography session with case 85mm f, 1.4 lens. For now, I'm working with completely manual focus, just as I always do in astrophotography. And right now, I have the aperture ring thoughtfully set to A, so I can conveniently control the aperture directly from the camera itself. At the moment, I'm shooting at f, 1.4, at maximum aperture. Let's see from here. Yes, perfect. I can control the aperture perfectly from the aperture ring, in fact, I'm going to set it manually to f1.4, so there's no risk of accidentally bumping the aperture control dial. And so far, I have to say that the focus ring, at least in manual mode, is very, very smooth. When I set it to the focus position, I get a lot of stars in the background, so I'm going to leave it perfectly focused, and let's take the first shot to see what we get. And there we have that first shot. Well, I have to say that in terms of image settings, right now I'm shooting 20 seconds at maximum aperture f1.4 and ISO 400. And that's because the sky I'm shooting from doesn't allow for more than that. It's a sky that's quite heavily light polluted. Here in Spain, we have a big problem capturing these kind of shots because they pass very low over the horizon. And it's very difficult to have a horizon completely free of light pollution. But well, uh, to see the situation of the stars, I think it's more or less enough. And this is the situation we have. Over here we have the globular cluster M4, the star Antares. I have to say that the stars appear quite sharp, quite round, but I do get the impression that they look a bit bloated. That is, I can't quite see that absolute pinpoint sharpness I would expect or that I've seen in other lenses. However, from my point of view, I think that for working at f1.4 maximum aperture, it's more than enough. Let's check the corners. Lower left corner. Well, overall, I see the stars looking pretty good. They seem quite sharp. It is true that I get the impression that the brightest stars saw a slight coma, but it's quite subtle. And I think from my point of view, it's more than acceptable at this aperture. Let's move to the upper left corner. Well, I see pretty much the same thing. Yes, it's true that there are some uh, stars, especially the brighter ones where you can notice a very, very slight coma. In my case, as I said, I wouldn't mind having it at all, because nowadays it's perfectly correctable with tools like Lorex Terminator. Let's move to the upper right corner. Here we can clearly see that slight coma in the brightest stars, but the smaller stars appear very sharp and very well defined. And now the lower right corner. Exactly the same, a slight coma in the brightest stars. Having checked the sharpness and the condition of the stars at maximum aperture, let's now set a smaller aperture. I'm going to stop down to f2. I'm going to carefully increase the exposure time to a full 30 seconds, and then let's proceed to take a new photo. All right, let's review the second shot taken at f2, 30 seconds of exposure, ISO 400. Now I can definitely notice greater sharpness in the stars. Here we have the M4 cluster again. Here we have the star Antares, which in this case, since we've stopped down one aperture stop, now shows us a sun star, a small sun star, with little points. And now I really get the impression that the stars look smaller, more like what I would expect in an astrophotograph. Let's go to the lower left corner. All right, now I would say the stars look pretty much correct to me. Let's go to the upper left corner. All right, here I can see that some of the brighter stars are still slightly elongated. But from my point of view, if at f1.4 it was perfectly acceptable, at f2, where they look even better, I think they're really, really good. In the upper right corner, the brightest stars show a slight distortion, but for me, they look quite correct. And in the lower right corner, it's the same. If at f1.4 the stars already seem quite good to me, at f2 for me, it would be the optimal point, perfect for shooting with this lens in astrophotography. 
f2 is still a very very bright aperture for practicing astrophotography and night photography. And also with the lens of this focal length, 85 millimeters, we're going to be able to do some really interesting things. But what I'm going to do is shoot a sequence of photos with these settings. At f2, 30 seconds of exposure, f2, ISO 400, and I'm going to capture a little over an hour. If I can capture two hours of integration of this object, all the better. And let's see what we end up getting with this case lens.